Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I have some pretty bespoke components in front of me. As you can see here, I've got a micro octocopter. Now I use the term micro loosely as it's quite big. In fact, if I take my GB190 and compare it against the octocopter, it's only just a little bit smaller than it. However, it is needed because to fit eight micro motors in a octocopter formation and have these propellers miss each other, it needs to be pretty big. So really, this is the smallest that it can be if I want to have rolling spider propellers on it, which I have. So what do we have here? Well, you may have seen a few videos back that I reviewed the Alien Flight Hexacopter from microfpv.eu, and this is an incarnation of that. So, Alien Flight, it's open source, and the original creators of Alien Flight put everything online so that you can make your own version of the board. So it's an F3 flight controller, and they designed a octocopter flight controller, and that's what this is. And this has been very kindly sent in to me by Jacob, who has featured on the channel before with his Alien Flight builds as well. But you go online and go to the GitHub site, I'll put a link in the description, and then you can use the schematics to have a circuit board company build one for you, or you can have a go at building one yourself, and that is what this is. So, that's pretty cool. The frame, of course, is also bespoke. This is made by my friend Phil. He has also featured on the channel previously, and he makes these frames himself with a water cutter. So, yeah, what I'll do is, if you're interested in building something like this, I'll put a link in the description to the Alien Flight slash Alien Wii Fan Club. And if you go on there and have a chat with a few people, I'm sure they will sort you out with it. You see, this is the definition of hobby in my opinion. Everything about this is hobby grade. The flight controller is built from scratch, the frame is built from scratch, and the whole concept is a scratch build. So it's really cool, this. So I've got a camera up the front here. This is the FX79T that we are all used to. And I really like the way that this frame works. It's so lightweight and it's really flexible, which isn't a problem with something this lightweight. And that is the way that it's designed. It is designed to be so lightweight, but the motors act as part of the structure. And I've not had one of these frames break on me yet. Phil, if you're listening, you need to start producing these frames because these frames are just absolutely brilliant. So, for the battery, I'm using the QX90 battery, which I have then used a Picnic Quads battery strap to fit underneath there. As for the firmware, you can actually run Betaflight on this, and I have been talking to Michael, who is one of the original designers of this, and he helped me to flash Betaflight onto this. However, it's really easy. You just select the Alien F3 in Betaflight, and it flashed no problem. The only thing that you need to do is under the frame type, you need to select custom and then that links the motors directly to these ports there and you've got an octocopter, which is just fantastic. So I'm gonna go out and fly this thing and the way that I'm gonna do that, first of all, I'm gonna do a line of sight flight and then I'm gonna do some FPVing. So what I've got here is some Fat Shark HD 2s. Now, you might remember that I am not a big fan of these due to the blurry edges on the screen. However, I've had to borrow a set of these because my Dominator V2s failed. One of the LED drivers broke and one of the images was constantly red. But I have to give Fat Shark some massive credit here. I emailed them about it. I didn't mention who I was, I, just a normal customer, I emailed them and they said, sure, send it along to us and we'll fix it under warranty, which is just great because I've had them probably just under a year, I'd say, maybe even over a year, and I sent it to them, but I also had the upgraded DVR as well, so 
they fitted that for me as well and here they are back and I'm so pleased about this because now I have got a super cap DVR and some really nice fat shocks that I like and I gotta give massive praise to fat shock they're expensive but the service was just fantastic I posted them out and literally two days later they came back so I gotta give big respect to fat shock there however I have used these HD 2s for this setup and what you might notice here as well is I've got this invader right hand polarized patch antenna now this was sent to me from Menace RC and recently you might have seen a lot of people using the immersion patch antennas on their fat sharks and this is a competitor to that so I'll put a link in the below because they're really cheap I think they're about eight pound something like that eight pound ninety five they're a UK company and it's basically the same antenna pretty much the only problem is of course it's a patch antenna and really it requires diversity because you're gonna get long range out of this but it's directional so I have ordered a diversity antenna for the fat sharks and I want to check out what the benefits of having a patch antenna and a cloverleaf antenna working at the same time so with this one when I do the FPV flight I'm just gonna have to keep it out in front of me because behind the antenna I'm not gonna get good reception at all and then of course lastly I have bound this to my Tyrannus and I'm using a Lemon RX satellite up there now you might be thinking what is the point of this when you can get a hexacopter and it's probably not going to have as much flight time as a hexacopter or a quadcopter. However, one thing that might interest you about this setup is it will carry an 808 cam. Now I haven't done that myself, however Phil who makes these frames he has pioneered the octocopter with the 808 so I will link that in the description. And thanks a lot to Phil and Michael and Jacob and also Menace RC for making this video possible. Let's go and take this for a line of sight flight first. So to arm, I've got it on a switch and all the motors will spin up and let's see how it flies. Wow, look at that. Eight motors on a micro. Feels good so far. Let's check out how much power the thing's got. <laughs> Plenty of power. Feels really dialed in, you know. I guess more motors means more resolution. It feels really smooth. The question is, am I going to be able to fly this like I do my quadcopters and hexacopters doing acro? Let's try a little bit of line of sight acro and see what it does whoa <laughs> it is really snappy so I've set my rates up as I normally have them at about 0.8 whoa can you believe that it's flying just like a quadcopter amazing really nice And you know, because it's a bit bigger, it's easier to fly line of sight further away. I've stuck two red props on the back so that it's easier to tell which way around it is. It's a really cool looking thing, this. And fast. Really nice to fly a line of sight, really smooth around the corners. It's actually nicer around the corners than my quadcopters. I can't believe this thing is doing flips so well. Backflip? Yeah, no problem. Right, time to bring it in for a landing and try FPV. I think it's gonna fly well.
This is the FPV Maiden. So first of all, I'm going to keep it in close because I'm in acro mode here and I want to make sure that it behaves correctly. And I quickly see that it does. So next I'm going to go for some rolls and it's pretty much more the same there. It's flying just like a hexacopter would or a quadcopter. And one thing that I did notice, and you can see it here, is that it is much smoother on the turns than a hexacopter or quadcopter. I guess there's more resolution with those extra motors, as I was talking before. But I've got my stock rate set up here, so I'm using 0.8 for the rate. And it flies really nice. I'm also using the stock PIDs. Now, the stock PIDs should actually be very similar to my hexacopter PIDs. I believe Michael said that he had updated the PIDs to be the same as what I set up on my hexacopter. So it's nice to have a little bit of involvement with that. Now, with these PIDs, though, it needs a little bit more on the D. I feel I'm getting a little bit of a wobble when it's leveling out, but... I didn't expect it to fly this well at all as I just used the stock pids, so really pleased with that. Now, one thing that you will notice is the picture is pretty good until the octocopter goes out of range of the antenna, and then I get quite a lot of breakup. So that is because of the antenna. I did notice that it worked better for longer range. Just look how smooth this thing is as I go for my four-point hesitation roll there. It's just such a smooth fly at this. Now, the only downside of this setup, really, is the flight time. The flight time is about four minutes with this battery. I guess you could carry a bigger battery, though, probably up to 1,000 milliamps, I would say, as you've got that extra power. There's not really extra punch, but there's extra power and as I say, you can fit a 808 camera to this, no problem, and it will pull it. And probably still be able to do acro with it. Yeah, so I am really happy with the way that this thing flies. I'm having so much fun with it. You wouldn't even know it was an octocopter unless you watched the video before this. It is just great. So I'm going to leave you with some more flying. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers. Is it what do you see as you twist the tiles beneath our feet?